Hey everyone, it's Allison Kinnear. I am coming to you really quick um, and I wanted to tell you uh, about how life was extra lifey for me this last week and some things that I did in case it is helpful to you. Um, I wasn't on here last week. That is because this time last week I was cleaning up vomit. Uh, my son got really sick. Turns out it was the flu. He had a super high fever for four days, threw up a lot last week, and um, and then had a fever for the next, for, for seven days. He just finally went back to school today um, for the first time. So, but this time last week, all I knew was very high fever and vomiting. My husband also said he wasn't feeling so well, but you know, take a take a little back seat to all the other things that were happening. Um, then on Saturday, my husband still wasn't feeling well and uh, tested him for COVID and he tested positive. So now mind you, anytime a kid gets sick or anybody comes down with COVID, it's always a bit nerve wracking, or at least it is for me. But it was particularly nerve wracking because I had a big talk that I gave yesterday, actually. I'll send you some photos and maybe even some video clips of that. Um, but I knew on Saturday that I needed to be healthy by Wednesday. And in addition to that, my daughter is in a play. It's happening this weekend. And we needed her to be healthy. And meanwhile, we have fevery, vomiting brother and covid -y father. So on Saturday, it was just uh, everybody <laughs> kind of isolated in their rooms. I cleaned the house like you would not believe. And Saturday was, uh, was when we tested my husband and found out he was positive. The rest of us were negative. We all still are negative. It's, we thankfully were able to contain it. But my catastrophizing, anxious mind really wanted to go in all the different directions. This whole, I know a lot of people go, okay, well, just imagine the worst case scenario. And my mind can imagine a lot of really worst case scenarios. And it turns out not to be a super helpful exercise for me. And uh, because it just kind of increases the anxiety. Anyway, so what did I do? Uh, I cleaned because I can clean. That's something I can do. It's like control the controllables. And I really had to work hard on my mind so that I didn't go into all those worst case scenarios so that I, I didn't catastrophize. And I do that by reminding myself that I don't know. I remind myself of what is real. And what was real on Saturday was that no one else had COVID. My son was no longer vomiting. He still had a high fever, but was kind of doing better. No one else at the moment had symptoms of the flu or COVID. And that was all I knew. And I didn't know what tomorrow would bring. I didn't know what the next hour would bring. All I knew was that much was true. So there was a lot of, I don't know, a lot of fear about what could happen and a lot of, but we seem to be okay. And then Sunday I took my dog for a run, met up with some dogs and Monday afternoon, I realized my dog had a punk, a bite puncture wound in her arm. <sighs> so Husband's home with COVID, son's home with fever, and now we've got an injured dog trying to figure out what to do. I had already taken her to the vet twice this month for other injuries, and I did not want to go a third time. So we borrowed a cone of shame that was way too big and dressed her in a lot of hilarious costumes, which is a whole other thing. And um, not like I was trying to put her in costumes. I was trying to protect her arm. I wasn't doing it just for kicks. Um, and we had a family member coming in that we weren't sure if she was going to come because the flu, because of COVID, now because of the dog. 
but she ended up coming, which is great. And, um, and meanwhile, we all kept testing negative and that was it. It was just like, let's get through the day. Let's get through the day and let's, we don't know yet what we know. So all I knew what to do is alert the people at Hudson University to say, I may not, my husband tested positive for COVID. I'm testing negative. We'll see. I'll keep you posted. I can plan for the event. But things were extra scrambly. <laughs> for those of you with kids, you know, having a kid home sick, um, he was great. But uh, it, it still is different, right? Like very much in mom mode. So then yesterday morning comes, day of the talk, and several things happen. Number one, I test negative for COVID once again. So yay, the talk is happening. All is well. It's going to happen. And then I saw my dog's arm had gotten a lot worse. So boo, have to take her to the vet. And then I got an email saying that a friend of mine who I knew, a dear friend who I knew um, had terminal cancer, or I found out just a couple weeks ago that she had terminal cancer. It turned out she's taking a turn for the worst and is in the process of dying right now. So what I found yesterday morning, the day of my talk, was a sick kid at home, a husband with COVID who's recovering fine, but still is still testing positive and is contagious. A talk to give later in the day. An emergency vet visit for the third time in a month. And a lot of grief. And I just, so what I did is I cried. I let myself feel my grief as much as I needed to. I reached out to my trusted people and asked them to send me a prayer for um, of grace and just to take care of my tender heart and that I could focus and do what I needed to do later that day. Um, I communicated with people who need to be communicated with and I also told them, hey, I have a talk, so if you don't hear from me, that's why. And I allowed myself to not necessarily look at all the text messages that were coming in about my friend and I did what I needed to do to feel okay to say goodbye to her. And, um, and, then I, and then I shifted gears. I was able to like cry enough to be able to then go, okay, what am I gonna say this afternoon? And to do a little practicing. So the thing is, is like, and this is not even talking about what happened in Nashville, what is happening in the world. Like all of that stuff is also happening, right? In addition to like in the macrocosm of the world, in addition to the microcosm of flu and COVID and dog bites and death and grief and shit still needs to get done. So what what I did, and I'm, and I'm hoping this is of service, is like, feel the feelings. Reach out to the trusted people. Don't go too far down the rabbit hole of catastrophizing and anxiety. Be with the suffering that is right now. I don't know what I don't know, and that is painful enough. I don't need to fill it in with stories of worst case scenarios because that's not helping anybody. And all I can do is just take this moment and go, okay, what is actually working and what is not working? And that is enough. And I'm going to control what I can control. And the rest of it, I'm going to Lamaze breathe my way through. Because that's it. That's all that can be done sometimes. So things are rocky. I know I'm not alone in that. I see, I'm seeing it a lot in social media. People are struggling. Uh, I just want you to know I'm here with you. And if any of those things help you, wonderful. And I'm showing up real for you today. My hair is a mess. No makeup. My nails are still done from yesterday. Um, and I want to let you know, the talk went great. I felt really good. I felt like I said all the things that I wanted to say. 
The audience was amazing. It was my first or my second in-person training in three years since the pandemic came. And it was amazing. It was really, really good. It was very well received. I got great feedback. Um, thank you to everyone at Hassan who came. Um, there were over 50 people in the audience and it was really, really good. So that's the gift. It's like, wow, all of these things can happen. It's like be in real grief, be in um, real power. These things are not always mutually exclusive. All right. Whatever is happening in your little corner of the world, I send you blessings and I will see you next week. Bye, everyone.